Today is uh, day 22, and we're reading from Genesis 30 and 31. These are not the most exciting chapters in all the Bible that we've read. We've got here a record of messed up people, messed up lives, messed up families. That seems to be the theme of these two chapters as we just get a closer uh, uh, bird's eye view of what's going on in these families. Leah follows the way of her ancestor, Sarah, offering her maidservants to her husband. She wants so badly to have children. She then again uh, moves ahead of God because certainly God could have initiated this. Bitterness and jealousy are growing in the sister's heart, animosity between the two, leading to manip manipulation and retaliation. The spirit of greed and comparison um, drives all of their actions against one another. Uh, this isn't love for God. It isn't love for Jacob, and it doesn't seem like it's love for the children. It seems more like this is about self. That is manipulation that's wrapped up in fear and idolatry and self-promotion. By the end of chapter 31, there are 11 descendants. Almost there, it is the distinguished 12 tribes of Israel. Have you ever thought about that the 12 tribes that are constantly laid out, framed out as a benchmark? You'll often hear it all through the Bible, 12 tribes of Israel, the 12 apostles. But when you think about the lives and where they come, came from and the messed up situation, it certainly helps us to recognize that God works in spite of our sin. Lord, have mercy for all of this. Just because the Bible records something doesn't mean that God approves it. God is working in the lives of these people in spite of their sin and rebellion. And God somehow looks down through the time, uh, the scope of time, and he sees the outcome. And he patiently works, recognizing one day Jacob the grabber is going to become Jacob or Israel, prince with God. Thank God he operates that way in your life and my life. Needless pain and hurt and suffering. The, uh, th this, uh, uh, this deceit here follows Jacob. And we remember how Jacob was, you know, this deceit is in Abraham, it's in Isaac, it follows to Jacob. We're gonna see it go all the way down into Joseph and these 12 uh, descendants. Uh, we'll just keep an eye on this. And some point, some place, someone has to break that chain of deceit. What Rebecca thought would take a few days has now accumulated into 20 years. Remember, she said to Jacob, go for a few days, let your brother Esau's temper uh, cool down. Well, it would be 20 years later. What you sow is what you reap. And now he begins to reap in those people that are around him. What the whole plan is wrapped up in one word. You know what that word is? Covenant. God's covenant promise to Abraham. Let's look past all of this to see what we can see about God here. First of all, he is kind to sinners. That's good news because that's all of us. Everywhere you look in the Bible, sure, there's the justice side and the judgment side of God. But first, I want you to notice that he is kind to sinners. Luke 6, 35 says, he is kind to the ungrateful and the evil. Jesus said the rain falls on the just and the unjust, that he wills that none should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Does God hate sin? Oh, you bet your life he does. He absolutely, he despises sin, injustice, ingratitude, all of that. But today we see his mercy. And secondly, today we see he's a covenant-keeping God, that what God promises, he obligates himself to. He doesn't shift back and forth dependent upon circumstances or conditions of people's hearts. He's made a promise, a covenant promise to Abraham. He's kept it to Isaac. He will keep it in Jacob. And we're going to see Jacob turn into another man. And this is the reward of God's long suffering and his patience as he waits for the process to play out in all of our lives.